Hi guys, I'm Randy with BRS TV and today we're testing our reef tanks water with one of the most easy and accurate titration style test kits currently out there, the Red Sea Foundation Pro Multi-Test Kit for Calcium, Alkalinity and Magnesium. We'll show you what comes with the kit, walk you through the testing steps for each one, provide you with some time-saving tips and tricks when using them, and discuss a couple of ways to keep them providing the most accurate test results possible. Here at BRS, we've been big fans of the individual Red Sea Pro test kits for some time, but even more so when Red Sea paired together the calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium tests together into one cohesive kit. And because you get all three tests in one, you end up paying almost half than what you would if you pick them up individually, making them one of the most affordable test kits available at that level of quality and accuracy. With the Foundation Pro Multi-Test Kit, you get the same high quality that Red Sea is known for, with features like a hard shell case to keep out water and light, a titrator that can be operated with a single hand to make accurate testing easier, and laminated cards for each test with step-by-step -step photo instructions for how to complete the tests. Not only are there photo instructions for each test, but you also get a manual with the written versions, as well as the required reagent and titration amounts needed for each test printed directly on their respective labels. Finally, each Foundation Pro test comes with enough reagents and titration solutions to conduct 75 tests, and depending on your testing habits, could potentially last you a couple months or even longer. On top of that, rather than having to purchase a completely new kit when your tests run out, Red Sea offers very affordable reagent refills, with each coming in at under 17 bucks, and include the liquid and powder refills, as well as replacement syringes. As I just mentioned, depending on your testing habits, these tests could last you a couple months or more. Most commonly, reefers test for alkalinity more so than the other two. For example, a few of us here test daily for alkalinity and weekly for calcium and magnesium. And at those testing frequencies, your out could last you a couple months, while the other two could potentially last significantly longer. Let's talk about what comes with the Red Sea Multi Foundation Pro Test Kit, starting with the hard shell protective case, which also houses three analytical grade glass vials with lids. You'll get three one milliliter graduated syringes, each with their own application tip in red, blue, and clear to maintain testing integrity and reduce potential cross-contamination between the three tests. One of the most useful additions to the multi-pro test kit is the titrator itself that allows for single-handed testing where you can add titrant solution while shaking the test vial at the same time. Along with that, Red Sea includes a 10 milliliter syringe to provide accurate and consistent water samples. Lastly are the reagent and titrant solutions, which consists of a color indicating solution for the alkalinity. The Calcium Pro test utilizes a 25 mil dropper bottle of Calcium Pro A, 20 grams of Calcium Pro B with a measuring spoon, and a 75 mil bottle of Calcium C component. Finally is the magnesium test, which comes with two 15 mil dropper bottles of both A and B component, as well as a 75 mil bottle of the magnesium titration solution. Before we get into the steps to conduct the alkalinity calcium and magnesium tests, let's briefly go over some things we'll want to do prior to starting them. First things first, how to read the plunger inside the syringe. The quick and easy answer is to follow the bottom seal of the plunger itself and forget about anything else happening within the syringe. Anytime you draw the liquid or read the end result for the test results, simply pay attention to the bottom of the plunger ring where it makes a seal with the syringe and you'll get the reading right every time. Here's a couple of other quick notes before we get started which can be pretty beneficial to getting the most accuracy from your Red Sea test kits. To ensure that we have a clean and uncontaminated testing sample, it's always best practice to give the vial a quick rinse in RODI water to remove any possible contaminants left over from previous tests. Also, when using the dropper bottles, to ensure you get a uniform and consistent drop each time, hold the bottles completely inverted over the vial before giving them a light squeeze. Let's first start with the quickest test to complete the alkalinity portion, where all I need to do is add 10 mils of tank water to my alkalinity testing vial and screw it into place into the titrator. Now with my blue tip syringe, I can slowly draw one mil of alkalinity pro reagent until the bottom of the plunger aligns with the one mil graduation, slip it onto the titrator and begin to slowly add the solution while shaking at the same time. You'll notice right away that the sample water turns to a light shade of blue, which I can read much easier when I hold the vial up to a white background. And as I continue to add reagent, the color starts to shift to more of a green. Once the color starts changing, I'll slow down and start adding one drop at a time with a quick swirl after each one. And when the sample is fully green, my test is over. For the alkalinity test specifically, if your sample turns yellow, you've gone just a bit too far. These color changes are more improved than previous versions of Red Sea Alkalinity, as we now have a distinct color change that tells us when we've gone too far, which means I no longer have to guess when enough reagent is enough. 
To find my alkalinity level on the chart, I'll count how much reagent I use starting from the top of the graduations and counting down the syringe. From where the bottom of my plunger stopped when my sample turned green, I can count 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and halfway makes 0 0.65, which I can match to the included chart on the alkalinity laminated car to find my result. The calcium test is performed pretty close to the same, except for this test only needs 5 mils of tank sample water. After that, you can add 5 drops of calcium reagent A, gently shake for 10 seconds, add an even spoonful of dry reagent B, shake for another 20 seconds, then start the titration step. I'll draw 1 milliliter of my calcium titrant solution with the red tip syringe, and with the sample in the handheld titrator, begin adding solution while mixing. For the calcium test, we're watching for the sample to change from that pink color in the beginning to a solid blue color like the one referenced on the testing card. Same as the alkalinity test, when I start to notice that the sample is changing color, I'll slow down to a drop by drop process until the sample turns from a pink to purple to a fully blue. All that's left to do is determine how much reagent I used and match it to the corresponding calcium reading on the chart. Finally, the magnesium test, which has much of the same steps as the alkalinity and calcium, but requires just a touch more attention to have how the reagents A and B are added. For this test, I only need 2 milliliters of sample water, and I can start adding the required 5 drops of magnesium reagent A. Rather than add all 5 drops at once, I need to gently shake the vial for a whole 15 seconds after each drop, which I personally have a hard time remembering which drop I'm on, so I like to keep count with my other hand after each one. Now you can add five drops of the B magnesium component, shake for a few seconds, then let the sample sit for a full minute or 60 seconds. When the 60 seconds is up, follow the same procedure for the titrator as we did with the alkalinity and calcium test, and watch for the sample to change from pink to a shade of blue near the end color on the testing card, then compare to the chart for your reading. That's really all there is to it, and it's pretty simple, but here's a few additional tips that we've found to help you continually achieve consistent results test after test. Rinsing the vials and syringes with RODI water after each test can really help to keep it clean from old reagent, which if left unrinsed could skew future tests. Along with that, it's best practice to store each vial filled with RODI water to make sure that they're clean and ready for the next test and save time in future testing prep. Lastly, what happens if your sample doesn't change color and you used an entire syringe? You can continue the test by filling another syringe of titration solution and continue adding until the sample changes. You can easily calculate the endpoint by using the conversions on the bottom of the testing cards. For example, every hundredth of a milliliter or every graduation line is equal to five parts per million of calcium. Maintenance is very simple with the Red Sea test kits, especially if you stick to rinsing and storing the vials with RODI water, as well as thoroughly rinsing and cleaning your syringes with RODI water as well. Outside of that, if you do notice some buildup within the vials, you can easily remove it with a little vinegar and water solution. It's also best practice to utilize the hard shell case to store the reagents, which can keep them from any possible light exposure damage. Really, there isn't much to accessorize the Red Sea Foundation Pro Multitest Kit with. However, if you have some difficulty reading the plunger and converting the endpoint, there are other 1 mil syringes out there that have reversed graduations, which tell you how much you used instead of how much you have left. Right now, these ones from Hannah are available in packs of 10, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see these individually in the future. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.